I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and welcome to episode 57. Today I'm going to build something that Randy, K7AGE, turned me on to. It's a little signal generator. Uh, it says it goes up to a megahertz, but it's really most useful for audio frequencies. Now I'm gonna do what Randy didn't. Randy did a very, very nice construction video. And I will have to tell you, if I had not watched Randy's video, I wouldn't have known certain key steps here. I've been totally flummoxed. So I'm gonna put a link to his video in the descriptive material and, and give him my kudos and thanks for everything that he does for amateur radio. Now what I'm gonna do in this video is talk about, in general, the unpacking and about uh, the uh, kinds of things that the Chinese are now doing as they deal directly with the American market. And then, after it's assembled, uh, we'll pick up there and do lots of tests on it with the oscilloscope to get some sort of a feel what it's doing. In the next video, episode 58, I'm going to use this to help me track down an audio problem in my BITX40 receiver, which I've got right up here. This is a QRP receiver that comes from India and just an absolutely delightful little project. But I uh, have been talking with people on the air and they say that my audio is quite muffled, that they're only getting about the first kilohertz or so. So we're gonna use this to track down whether that's in the microphone or in the radio itself. So let's get started with the unpacking. First of all, let me show you the web page where I got it, and then we'll unpack it. Uh, I'll go ahead and assemble it behind the scenes because Randy does a really good job of that. And then I'll pick up where we can do some testing with the oscilloscope. Hang on, let's go. It's interesting to look at the uh, label they put on it. It's got China Post and United States Postal Service on the same thing. So they've got some way of doing this so that it just goes straight through. They got my zip code right there. And this is where it came from and uh, who it was sent to. Mount Sneffels Press is me. I used to uh, publish uh, fantasy books and now I use this as my general business. And it has a USPS tracking number on it that's a little different from the normal tracking number. Uh, but this allows it to be tracked inside the United States. Over here on the other side we see the customs declaration and it tells where it's from, building B, sixth floor, and uh, some numbers there for it, ship two, and then this is the customs form, electronic parts, and then there's some what look like Chinese characters that did not print well. And it's uh, barely more uh, than a few grams, about 11 grams. Okay, the value US dollars five, I actually paid seven something for it. And the sender's signature never got done and no one uh, seemed to care. So this came straight through like this. And what's um, inside, we note first that they used a, uh, uh, a padded envelope uh, on the inside. So they used some care in the shipping and then the little bag of parts arrived with this uh, uh, bubble wrap around it and this comes out easily enough uh, from that and we're left with the kit of parts and these are the parts that make up the so-called case. Uh, here are the parts that make up the uh, the pr uh, <laughs> that make up the signal generator kit. This generator kit is supposed to go up uh, about uh, one megahertz, so we'll use it for testing some of uh, our uh, circuits. Let's see what's inside. Okay, what's inside is a bag of parts, okay, uh, no label or anything, just a bag of parts. And then this right here is the circuit board right there. And then the rest is uh, sort of like um, it's clear plastic with a covering on it. Okay, so uh, and this right here must be the instructions such as they are. I 
the kits I've put together from these Chinese types are often very cryptic. Functional generator component layout diagram. Okay, there's the component parameter table. It's just a list of parts. The welding installation. They mean soldering. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get an arc welder in here. The components are welding the front board from low to high principles, namely the first low welding component such as capacitor, resistor, diode, etc. And then it goes on to say welding IC socket, terminal blocks, finally power socket, adjustable potentiometer. The back with a diagonal cutting pliers to cut short the pins as far as possible. <laughs> okay, let's see if it tells us what it wants for power here. Um, 5.5 volts. You see, center part of the 9 to 12 volt power supply. Supply more than 12 volt. The output waveform is unstable. Okay, fine. And then how to use it, you move jumpers around on the circuit board uh, to do that. So Randy provided a, a, a great uh, video on how to put this together. So I'm just going to put this together and then uh, we'll learn from it. I'm not going to duplicate what Randy did. And I'll put a link to uh, his video in the text accompanying this this video. So here are the components. Oh my goodness, real knobs. Look at that. And trying to get them all out here. Some more stuff. Yeah, and I think I'm going to get the uh, ohmmeter to determine exactly which resistors are which. Now I want to show you a recent acquisition. This is uh, a little stand. Uh, these slide in and out and they grip the circuit board uh, with a little spring here so you can actually kind of pull it and move it um, and then if you want it can be freely rotating so you can get around to the other side of it um, or hold it in in one position while you're doing um, a bunch of stuff on the board and then flip it over so this is my first try for this we're gonna see how well it works All right, we're going to do some basic tests on this little unit now. Beautiful little thing. Uh, by little, I mean little. It's a signal generator. I've got the thing connected, uh, ground to the ground, and the probe to the uh, sine slash triangle output. Okay. So um, I'm going to set this. You do this by moving the jumper. I'm going to set this on its highest range. Now I want to note that as the frequency goes down, let's see, it's got a, oh, let's get it up here, horizontal, I'm going to move the trigger. Okay, this is in the range 65 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. So let's turn the knobs all the way down and we get 58.7 kilohertz here at the lowest so that's below the 65 now let's turn this up note that the the amplitude goes down much above 373 kilohertz and the amplitude starts going down so let's uh, put the vertical scale a little different it's changed the uh, okay um, and change the trigger here. 1.34 megahertz. Those aren't real convincing looking sine waves, but there they are. Just out of curiosity, what sort of a, a frequency pattern do we get on that thing? All right, it's a, uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to take a picture of this. Okay, 2 megahertz per division. All right, and this is uh, 1.3 so it's up here and there don't appear to be very strong uh, harmonics 
but let's turn the uh, frequency down and those harmonics kind of drop out of the way so it's not quite flat on the top but it's got nice clear edges can be used for triggering you can barely see the little traces in there I'm going to try again to take a picture So what have we learned? We've learned that this cute little thing is a fairly straightforward kit to build, uh, especially after watching Randy's video. And I will admit that if I had not watched Randy's video, I would have been flummoxed by a couple things on the kit. So please do watch Randy's video. That's Randy K7AGE. I'm powering it with a 12 volt battery. That's this right here. So. Um, it says if you go over 12 volts it will distort but uh, it's only about 12.4 volts plus it's handy okay so on the output you have this common and then you have uh, the square wave output is in the middle which is not affected by the level control and then you have the um, output here which is either a sine wave or a triangular wave okay and they 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 kind of max out at certain levels the uh, ranges in here are wildly <laughs> different from reality uh, this sets the level okay and if you go too high it will distort and this is supposed to be the coarse frequency so you know not so much uh, this right here is supposed to be your fine frequency adjust and we're on 3 kilohertz to so 3 kilohertz to 65 there we go you've got to uh, <laughs> you do a lot with the so-called fine takes you quite a ways so they experiment with it there now the output signal seems reasonably clear um, if I move this out of the way and put a speaker here, you can sort of hear it. Let's get down to something a speaker can um, can actually play. Is this worth getting in building? Well, for fun, sure. Um, it, it goes up to one megahertz, but really it's designed around audio frequencies and can be used as a signal injector for testing this, that, and the other. Uh, is this something you should get? Well, good grief, it was like seven and a half bucks. So, sure, why not? And it was a fun kit to build. And so we know that the little signal generator slash function generator works very well. In the next video, we're going to use it to troubleshoot the audio problem here. It's the transmitted audio that's the issue. We're going to try injecting signals from uh, 0 to 3 kilohertz in here and see how much the system attenuates them to find out if I just simply need a better microphone or if I need to make some changes in here. Please click like. Please subscribe. Check out the tip jar and the Ask Dave playlist. Until next time, 73.